Throughout the last couple of months, there have been a lot of changes in the game. And some clans have been buffed, the attack models has been introduced, and the owl clan has been released. And each team has to have clans who have certain roles, and that plays into the meta as well. And the role of a potential colonizer has been added to that list. So not only does a team need a clear and a feaster and a scouter, but it could also mean that a team might need a potential colonizer if it wants to attack instead of scaling. So in this video I'm going to talk about the different power levels and I'm going over the different potentials of all the clans in Northgard. Let's start. The first clan I want to talk about is the horse. The horse is in kind of a bad spot. It isn't necessarily a bad clan, but it doesn't excel at anything. It has decent scaling, but it kinda is spawn dependent. It can like feast, scout and colonize, but can't do all of that really, really well. And despite all the changes in the last couple of months, the horse didn't really get any buffs whatsoever. So the horse is one, if not the worst clan in Northgard right now. Who would have thought? Besides the horse, I think the bear deserves a spot there as well. The bear has been buffed a little bit. You can recruit the bear as soon as the game starts. The only problem is, apart from like the winter festival getting changed and replacing Freya's blessing, there's not really anything else going on for the bear. It's a decent clan, but compared to all the other clans, it's pretty bad. Now, that's it actually for the D tier. Let's move over to the C tier. And in the C tier, I have a clan which might surprise a lot of you guys, which is the tree rat, namely the squirrel. And there's like one big problem about that. As you guys know, we need like two roles filled in because of the attack malice and because of the changes. So rushing has to be very coordinated. The squirrel cannot feast and the squirrel cannot really like colonize easily towards the enemy. It's still a very good 801 clan, it's still a very decent 802 clan, but it isn't able to fill all these roles. It can excel at very specific team comps, but apart from that, I think it's not that good right now in the meta. Apart from the squirrel, we have a clan which might surprise you as well, which will be the boar. So the boar has always been a very solid clan. It's very good as it can like feast, it can scout, it can scale. Boar is very good with a jar. But the problem is all the clans above the boar are really good at something and you could say they're better at something compared to the boar. So even though the boar is in C tier and I think it belongs in C tier, it's still a very good clan if you play it with jar. But being dependent on either like an 801 all in or on building Jar is not as good in the meta right now. There are other clans who are just better at scaling for 802 and who are just better at going for the 801 all in. So that's it for the C tier. Let's move on to the B tier. And in the B tier, in front of the B tier, we have the Kraken. And man oh man was it hard for me to rate the Kraken because I was a little bit biased <laughs> looking at this list. Because me personally, I'm a big, big Kraken enjoyer. Kraken is super strong 802 still. The only problem I have is Kraken is not very versatile. Namely, colonizing towards enemy is not that good because you actually get a malice for colonizing non-coastal tiles if it's not like high tided. So Kraken can't do that. Kraken can still feast a little bit, but it can't scout. So if you have a Kraken on, on the team, it's basically just saying, yeah, I'm gonna go with like 25 Warband in 802, what you're gonna do. And if you've got a team which can adapt really well, pressures a little bit 801, can colonize a lot and play it smart, Kraken might not be that good of a clan right now, sadly. Funnily enough, the clan behind the Kraken is the direct counter which is the Raven. Raven, even though it is a direct counter to the Kraken, has been super bad the last patches because they've nerfed the scouts. So you don't actually get lore by scouting up the tiles, but you have like a steady lore production while scouting. There has been a slight buff, the latest patch, and that actually changed a lot. Raven from going super broken went to being decent in very certain matchups. If you want to go against Kraken, for example, if you want to scout the map early, it has a decent scaling. And even though I think it's kind of a bad clan, I ranked it in B tier because I think it's a very versatile clan. Let's change the Kraken symbols to better ones, shall we? So. After the Raven, we have another clan which is versatile, doesn't really have a place in the meta in terms of 
it being broken, but it still is very decent, it's the dragon. So funnily enough, the dragon is actually played not in the standard I'm gonna convert 802, but I'm gonna convert a little bit in 801 and I'm gonna harass. The dragon can do a lot of different things. It can actually like scout. I've seen teams scout with the dragon as well, but the best thing it does is having Dragonkin and Suter early 801, these units are really, really strong. And if you are fortunate enough to get the healing blessing, a Dragon 801 is a pain to deal with. So even though it's not that good scaling wise, like the 802, there are a lot of different clans which are better at the standard 802. We'll come back with them later. For 801, it's still a decent clan and that's why I think it deserves to be B tier. That's the B tier. For you guys let's move on to the a tier and man oh man are there a lot of different clans in the a tier right now so i started out which might surprise you a lot with the goat i think the goat has redeemed itself it is super flexible it's never bad you can have bad spawns with the goat like having only three sheep having closed lore but even though you have such a bad spawn goat is just very good because even though you have like a bad spawn or you could have a bad spawn with goat it is super good because it can actually fill in certain roles such as feasting such as scouting such as having the ability to colonize to the enemy if you need that and furthermore it can help sustain the team by sending sheep which is a huge deal if there's gonna be a blizzard and a team has to sustain all the warband so having a goat on the team would be a great lifeline i think this clan is super good right now and additionally if you see sheep on the map having the ability to just send your war chief clear that tile and get the sheep from a wild neutral tile is amazing for this clan so i think this clan heavily belongs in a tier so after the GOAT, it was really difficult for me to rank because I think both of the clans are strong. I would give the slight edge to Ox because Ox has been buffed a lot the latest patches. Torfin, namely, doesn't cost 250 coins anymore. It's also easier to scale because there have been different kind of slight buffs to the lore of the ox and you can play the ox for an 801 shield bearer rush or warrior rush i like the warrior rush more because the warrior upgrade the forging if you have the lore is free now but you can also go for the classic 802 and because of all these like slight changes the ox is an actual unit to deal with and still ox relic is one if not the best relic in the game so if you let this clan scale it's super strong Still. And I think Ox finally has a place in the meta again. So after the Ox, I have one last clan in the A tier, which is not a clear clan. Stoat. And talking about the Stoat, it's basically a thing of if you survive 801, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna have a very good time. Because Stoat is super good for defending, and especially so in a meta where attacking is very, very hard, way harder than before because of the attack malice and because of the colonizing towards the enemy, which is needed. So lords, militia, and all these like different types of units who don't need any upkeep are super good coupled with all the population of the stoat stoat super strong clan only problem is it's very vulnerable in 801 and depending on the spawn it could be even worse but if you have a normal spawn where you could scale a little bit have your first eight livability tile set up with one or two of one or two of forts then this clan is super strong still is always was and i think it definitely belongs a spot in the a tier so let's change these stoat symbols because stoat symbol is very nice let's talk about the next clans and man oh man was it hard to rate the next clans the first clan i personally rate is the eagle and even though the lynx has been buffed and the eagle has been nerfed and the wolf is unchanged i think the eagle still has a slight edge as a clear clan the caches are still strong even though you have to be careful because the healing field does not heal you that much right now this clan is still very good namely because it can can be ready 801 and it can scout by themselves so it can fill the role of the scouter and the clear clan at the same time having like two roles as a clear clan is super super good we'll see that in the other clear clan i'm gonna put on the list but apart from that it can also scale and a scaling clear clan is insane and having the ability to befriend the Yurtun with scouts getting relations with teammates scouting clearing the team clearing the team very fast because the eagle chief is easy to get it still belongs in the a tier 
I don't think it's super broken like before because of the nerf, but it's still super strong. Right behind that, that might surprise you guys as well. Close enough is the Lynx. I think Lynx, the same as the Eagle, as a clear clan, it can fill two roles, namely feasting and clearing. And with the latest changes, if you place the Lure, with the Lynx, you can easily feast for your team. So if you have a team which is not that great at feasting, for example, if you have a team without a goat or without a stack, then the Lynx can fill that role. And that's really nice. And coupled with that, the cats are very strong. Miliki is healing. Miliki can heal the cats. All these slight changes, I think, boosted the Lynx slightly, just slightly in front of my wolf. So wolf, don't get me wrong, it's still a good clear clan. These clans belong in A tier. You could make a case if you say, yeah, clear clan is busted, they belong in S tier. But I think all of these clear clans are at one power level and they are excelling at different things. For example, in 801, if you have like 801 map with a raven, wolf could actually contest lynx, that's fine. But if it's a normal early 802 game, the wolf has no chance. No chance at all, because trackers are just way too strong and eagle can just outscale the wolf easily. So even though all of these clans are in a different order, <laughs> I think all of them belong in A tier. So you might think, oh damn, there's like a lot of clans left for S tier and you're right about that. <laughs> the first clan I want to talk about, which feels like super broken right now, especially in combinations, is the stag. Can we get a minute and talk about how OP and busted the fame win for stag is? Even though you know what's coming, stag win is possible early 802, sometimes even 801 in winter 801. So a clan which has like a passive win condition in the back, such as a fame win, when you don't even need to attack enemies, is so busted. Like, Stag is so strong right now. And even coupled with Owl, it's even stronger. Because Owl can just give like branches to the Stag, and the Stag is just, yeah, okay, I'm not gonna take colonization lore, I'm gonna just take eradication. Owl is gonna give me colonization lore. I'm getting even more food, and these clans actually enable an 801 fame win. Absolutely insane. And that's why I rated both of these in S tier and they're at the top spot. Because you can have like military scaling, you can be very strong in 802 and you can like crush people with your military, but that's nothing in comparison to like clans just passively fame winning in the back and there's nothing you can do about that. So I really hope either Stag or Owl will get a slight nerf in the future. I'm only hoping for that, <laughs> but let's see what the future holds for that. After that, we see the Snake still in S tier. Snake heal has been nerfed as well, but still it's such a strong clan. It can play for 801 where, where clans are weak. If the clans are ready for 801, it can even go for 802. You can build the city builder Snake still. Super, super strong clan, especially having Zigni who scales as well the burning of tiles is super strong as well as super toxic and yeah this clan even after slight nerf in S tier I think and now we got only two clans remaining which will be the lion and the rat respectively the only reason why I'm putting like all of these five clans in S tier is because all of these clans are busted in their own way if we talk about the lion the lion champions as well as for ultra late game, Holy Fire is just insanely strong. So if you let a lion survive until 802, you're gonna have a bad time. And that the same thing goes for rat. It's hard to balance lion and rat. I think they're both on the same power level. Really, really map dependent. If you have an insane rat spawn, rat can easily overtake the lion. It's just that I think the lion military has the slight edge. So the rat needs upgrading shaman camps. If the shamans don't have enough health, the lion doesn't really need that much of a setup for the champions to crush the shamans. These are the clans in S tier, super broken in their own right. We got the scaling clans. They can fame win, they can even scale. I didn't even talk about all the different kind of roles the stack can fill. The stack can rush as well. The stack can feast, scout and scale. So very broken clan. Same goes for the Owl. If the Owl has Relic, it's one of the, if not the best clan in the game because not only can it like be super strong alone, but it can boost the teammates. And boosting teammates with certain lores could be game-breaking and game-changing in their own right. Snake, like I said, burning tiles, still scaling Zigni, city builder Snake, having the potential to go through neutrals, playing the map being super annoying with the burn, still belongs in S tier. And then we have the 802 military powerhouses right behind that with the lion and the rat. 
That is my tier list. Feel free to tell me in the comments what you think about this list and which clan you might have put somewhere else. I'm really looking forward to your opinion on this. And if you like the video, feel free to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. And as always, take care. Bye.